Welcome to the Saint Happy Hour Podcast with hosts Ralph Malbro and featuring bloggers Andrew Juge of SaintsNation.com, Kevin Held of the Team Drops the Ball, and Dave Cariello of the Now Street Chronicles. This podcast is nothing but serious football talk and hardcore analysis. Which four of you would survive the longest in the zombie apocalypse, and in which order would you die? No, Ralph, no offense, you're going first. No, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> the zombies would smell Dave's sugar blood and target him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have a joke, Dave. <laughs> Dave, Dave smells like nougat. Now, here's your host, Ralph Malbrose. All right, welcome to another edition of Saints Happy Hour Podcast. As always, we are sponsored by you, the fans. You can find us on the Facebooks, the Twitters, the YouTubes. I promise I'll update the channel this week. You can find us, search Saints Happy Hour Podcast on any social media, and you'll find us except for Instagram because we're a podcast. What the fuck does pictures have to do with anything? Um, so me and Andrew talked to an actual Saints player, Natrell Jamerson. He was a great interview. We'll have that later, a little about 25 minutes. Uh, it was fantastic. Andrew, we talked about very important things like Post Malone, his favorite order at Pop Valleys. Uh, what else did we talk about? Um, his touchdown celebration. We talked about really important things. We went through uh, Falcons hatred. Boots. Yeah. Like, we talked about, like, mm-hmm. hardcore football shit, like zones yeah. and fire blitzes and all that. No, but Andrew did ask him some legitimate. We did, we did talk about some three safety package stuff. <laughs> yeah, we did. We talked a little bit of a little bit legitimate football. Um, so we'll have that in twenty minutes. So, so three weeks, gentlemen, three weeks away from Saints training camp starting. The World Cup's helped me get through get through it. NBA free agency. LeBron just made the Western Conference a nightmare. Um, so, Dave, are, are you are you surviving? Are you, are you almost? Are you, do you do you see the, the 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 light at the end of the tunnel of the dark off season? Uh, I was surprised when you just said three weeks till training camp. That makes it seem really close. I wasn't even thinking it was that close. So, the veterans uh, support doesn't, doesn't, the doesn't seem so bad when you put it that way. We're in July and there's preseason games in August. I know. Um, yeah, no, I think I'll be I'll be fine. I'm, we're actually going on vacation next week uh, to New York for a little bit, uh, so that knocks out one of those weeks. And, Are you ever uh, not on vacation? I don't know what that means. I never take vacations. I own my own business. <laughs> what the hell is that? What, what does that even mean? I don't know. I, I just feel like <laughs> I remember pictures from Florida and pictures. Well, uh, I don't know. That was yeah. That was like a Memorial Day weekend getaway. And this isn't even this isn't even a vacation. This is just me going home to see my family and friends uh, you know this isn't like i'm gonna be on a beach or anything like that or drinking Sounds like a vacation to me drinking fruity tropical drinks with umbrellas in them because that's my I, definition of a vacation yeah like i went to, uh, Di- I went to disney yeah, so world that's I, not really I'm a vacation to my house too, like, so that's keeping me extra my house. My, house. my house my house uh so you know we're continuing our preview i i, I would we should have stretched out the preview long we should have started them early i didn't realize we only had three more weeks till training camp because we got to go so this week uh, we're doing uh, the Saints receivers, but it's, we're doing like receivers and tight ends together. Um, I argue with people online. People love the Saints receivers, Andrew. And I'm like, really? You got Michael Thomas and a bunch of... Eh. I mean, it, you know, it, it could all work out great, but like... You got Ginn, who is he going to have another career year? You got a dude with a busted up knee. You got a rookie. You got an eight hundred year old tight end. You bring it back like this. This group, like, I don't. It's not bad. It's just not like when I think of this roster, I don't think, wow, wide receivers fucking loaded. Well, I mean, am I talking about tight end and receiver in tandem? Well, you could start. You could start with. I mean, just as a receiving overall as a group, but I mean, you can break it up if you want. Yeah, I mean, well, I'll just mention this real quickly about tight end first. I mean, to me, that's the one big disappointment of the off season. Um, you know, I, I was really excited, of course, about Jimmy Graham. You were and, heartbroken about Jimmy Graham. People forget yeah, about it because it's a long time ago. I mean, you I were really felt like devastated. that was a missing piece for the offense. You know, and, and Breeze even said that. I mean, I remember Breeze basically saying that yeah we really need him like he he would we we probably need him now more than we needed him when we had him you know it was kind of the comment that breeze had so um 
Yeah, I know he's excited that Ben Watson's back, but I mean, it's just not, yeah, it's just not the same thing. Um, so the big disappointment for me is tight end. I mean, they get rid of Fleener, they add Watson, and I feel like it's a whole bunch of the same. Um, now we'll see. You know, they've got the UDFA they really like, so Yodler, we'll see if that guy. Yodler. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if he can develop at all. But you know, a lot of times these guys, even if they have potential, you know, they don't make much of an impact in year one. So uh, tight end, I would say, is one of the biggest question marks on the whole team for me positionally. Um, you know, if Benjamin Watson can play 16 games and keep the level he's had the last uh, several years, um, then then sure, I'm less worried. But I don't know if he can do that at his age. So we'll see. Receiver, I feel pretty good about. I mean, first of all. You have a star in Michael Thomas, and obviously after you're number one, you're going to have a drop-off, but there's a lot of guys in the mix, and I think the strength of this receiving core is in its depth. I don't know that there's necessarily one guy that stands out to me as phenomenal, but I'm really excited to see Trey Quan Smith. I'm really excited to see what Cameron Meredith can do coming back from his injury. Some real positive signs. I mean, I'm a homer, but real positive signs from Trayvon Durall so far, and he's, he's had taken a big leap in year two, so I'm excited to see what he can do. We know Ted Ginn kind of has the deep threat ability. Brandon Coleman is a great blocker. You know, and then there's also like kind of question marks about Austin Carr. I mean, I, I'm not mentioning Tommy Lee Lewis because he excites me less at this point, but, um, you know, Austin Carr's another I guy. Forget, in the I forgot about year. Austin Carr for completely. I mean, you know – it feels like they have a lot of Manti Teo type players. You know, it's like a bunch of like, I'm not sure I want any of these guys starting, but if they have to come in, then I'm all, I'm kind of, they're in, they're all interesting to me, you know? And so, I mean, we'll see, but I think it's very conceivable that two or three of these guys that were kind of not expecting to do anything end up being nice surprises. And if there's anyone in the league that can make like average or pretty good receivers be awesome. It's Drew Brees and Sean Payton. We've Dave, seen it with Will Smith. Dave, we've seen it with Cook. So, like, bottom line for me is if any of these guys have anything, their Saints are going to find a way to utilize it. So, um, I'm excited to see what these guys can do, and I'm hopeful. Dave, I was just thinking as Andrew was talking about how people we forgot about that were on the team. I was thinking for my preview column for WWL, I can create a, a take so flaming hot that it can <laughs> melt the internet. And here it is. Playoff Josh Hill is real and it's spectacular and he's going to catch 80 balls. He's like Rondo? Yeah. It's like playoff Josh Hill, but he's going to translate it to regular season Josh Hill. And he's going to catch oh, 80 balls. Happened. What do you think about that? Dave. I think you're an idiot. I think you're an idiot, and you should keep your thoughts to yourself. Now, now, uh, now's the time to use the crazy pills sound bite. <laughs> I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Uh, let me see. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. There you go. There you go. Well done. Great. Good. Good. Quick timing there. Good, quick time. Or no, you could play the. It's not a lie if you believe it. <laughs> I don't have that on the board, unfortunately. I messed that up. Uh, but Dave, what, uh, what's, no, I, I what's, don't think. What's... In all seriousness, though, uh, I don't. I don't, would be very, very shocked to see Josh Hill put together those kind of numbers and that kind of performance uh, over the long term course of a season. Yeah. But, I mean, the Saints let Willie Sneed walk. I don't. Yes. I don't think they're doing that unless they feel great about what, what I mean, they have. Dave, what what's a I think what's the question mark is like Ted Kid Jr. Like what, what kind of what kind of second year with the Saints is he going to have? I mean, is he going to continue to be uh, a really good veteran guy who can actually come through for you um, and, and and be a go-to guy for Drew Brees like he was last year? Very surprisingly, or is he going to go back to the Ted Ginn that we remember with the Panthers? Uh, you know, so. Who we were totally uh, we, cool with having. Like, we were totally cool when, when they signed yeah. him. And we're like, and that's going to be fun. It's going to be Ted Ginn. He's going to catch 45, 50 balls. He's going to drop about six. And it's going to be really fun. Um, I have a smoking hot tick. I mean, just absolutely on fire. Um, Ted Ginn will not lead the NFL in catch percentages again this year. <laughs> <laughs> That's a... uh, but I mean, but I mean, but, but seriously, I mean, you, you know, Cameron Meredith, we went through mini camp and whatever 
OTAs, blah, 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 and everybody had very positive things to say about him and his injury and where he was in his rehab uh, ahead of schedule. He's going to be ready for training camp. Um, you know, I mean, if he's your number two guy and Ted Ginn's your number three guy, um, assuming everybody's healthy, I, that's, that's, that's nothing to sneeze at. I think that's pretty good. And then that leaves, you know, I, I think Trey like Smith is going to be Mitchell. good, man. I think Trey Quan Smith is going to yeah. be good. I think the, the I think the biggest worry for me with receiver is and look injuries any injury can like like certain injuries can like wreck the Saints here but I feel like the difference between Michael Thomas and everybody else is so wide and this offense kind of like he's a star and it's become like not totally dependent on dependent upon him but man he's a giant chunk of it and it's not the same old 2007 8 9 drew Brees, where you can like pull one of the receivers out and plug one of them in and it's fine you know like this is andrew i feel like this offense is kind of like not as good as 2011 but 2011 was jimmy graham sproles and colston a little bit but Graham and Sproles were like the engine of it. I feel like Michael Thomas, if they didn't have him for four weeks, they'd be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, you know, I mean, he moves the chains. And the other thing is they've done a great job of finding ways to getting Michael Thomas the ball. And is he elite, though, high, high Andrew? Situation. Is he elite? It's what? Is he elite? Saints fans argue yeah, that constantly. Yes, I, I think he's elite. Yeah, I really do. Dave. I think he's an elite receiver. I mean, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> there, there's this whole tier one, tier two thing that Brian goes through. But like, for me, he's a top ten NFL receiver for sure. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I consider that elite. Dave Benjamin Watson. He is not young. Watson, but the dude, he caught a ton of passes from Joe Flacco. Like, I Speaking mean, of elite. Like if you so, were, what was the term I used, Ralph? He was binge throwing to Ben. He was binge, he was binge throwing to Ben Watson, <laughs> which is fine and it's great. But like, what's a what's a realistic what's realistic for a dude that's old and has a coming off a Achilles injury from two years ago? Like, you know. Uh, well, you know what. You can't yeah, hold an injury against him when he played last year exactly. healthy. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what I was going to say. Forget the Achilles injury. He's already come back from that and shown that he's fine and can play at a high enough level. So throw the Achilles injury out the door. That's old news. Uh, you, you can't be submitted as evidence. Um, I, 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 he's probably going to be the, I mean, he's gonna be the they're leading uh, tight end, obviously, as far as passes, catches. Uh, he, he'll probably be like top three. Uh, caught passes for the team, I would say. He'll, he'll be in the top three for sure. Ooh, top three. I was going to say, will he catch twice as many passes as Josh Hill and uh, everybody? Uh, the, their yeah. Saints tight ends caught for, come combined for 28 catches last year. I'm going to say that Deion Yelder leads the tight end group in catches this year. Oh, no, that's spicy take. That's a spicy take. Yeah. That's spicier than J.D. is. Look. Record Jesus. this, record this, and we'll play it again in January. <laughs> that's spicy. I mean, mark it down. That's 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 spicier than uh, than my take of Jonah Hill catching eighty balls. Um, Jonah but, Hill. But he's a but but Andrew. Seriously though, if you were like wagering on but like the other could catch like twenty four passes, and I could still be right. You're, you you're could a, be. <laughs> he could be, yeah. But the thing is, like, he's a dark horse if you were wagering, Dave, on, like, uh, training camp uh, hero and the hype. And, 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 like, he's a he's a dark horse to, to be on the hype train in the preseason. Like, he could have a really kick-ass third quarter in that opening game and have 900 features written about him. You know? It, yeah, the yeah. problem right now is it's like the – the Belmont Stakes and Taysom <laughs> Hill is like you know he's like five lengths ahead of any other horse. Taysom Hill, you gotta bet you gotta bet eight dollars to win one for the hype, for the hype train, man. I got I got relatives calling me that that are like old they're old and they don't follow the internet they don't really have too much of the internet they just read the paper and they're like man Jeff Duncan would have really 
call him about Taysom Hill. The media really, really likes him. Like, what's up with this dude? And I'm like, I was like trying to explain to my cousin who Taysom Hill was. I felt like I was like trying to explain, like a 14 year old girl trying to explain how awesome Taylor Swift was. <laughs> it was, I was just like, he's this, he's the quarterback, and he played on the special teams last year, and he ran back in the kickoffs, and now he's he's gonna be a good quarterback. And my cousin was like, whatever, you're you're high. Um, but uh, this group. Andrew, do you, do you, if I said to you, Ted, because Ted Ginn's an interesting one because he was the best in the NFL last year, according to PFF, against off and press man coverage. So, like, where, like, I don't think he's going to have the career year he had last year, but is he going to fall all the way back to regular Ted Ginn? I don't think so because I just think he's got really good chemistry with Breeze. And yeah. he's in an offense where, you know, you got to remember, like, Ginn has never had a good quarterback, you know. And I I mean, Cam Newton was an MVP, but, like, Cam Newton is a tough guy to play with if you're a receiver, you know. And so I just I just think Ginn has never played with a quarterback like this before. And I, I kind of underestimated how well they would fit together. Um, so... I don't think he's going to have the season he had last year. And I think part of that is the Saints kind of have a lot of young, interesting receivers that could step up here. And I'm talking about Meredith and Traquan Smith primarily. Um, although, I mean, I'm interested to see a lot of these guys. Um, and, you know, there always seems to be a UDFA that surprises. And they've got a couple rookie receivers besides Traquan Smith. Who knows what those guys could show. Um, but, again, I think if they're letting Willie Sneed walk, I think they feel really good about this crop. And I don't think Ginn is going to have a huge drop off. Um, I still, and I think he has the luxury of being in an offense where Breeze is the quarterback, Thomas is the number one receiver, and Kamara is in the backfield. And I think when you have such dynamic weapons like that, it allows a game breaker like Ginn to be a little bit under the radar. And uh, that's why he's so effective in this offense. Dave, I'll continue. Michael Thomas, over 102 catches. Dave, you there? Oh, me? That was yeah. for me? I didn't that was to you, Dave. yeah. Oh, all I heard you say was Michael Thomas, 102 catches. Yeah. Uh, over, under? Yeah. yeah. What did he have last year? Uh, I think he had 104, didn't he? 104. I mean, you're putting it did right. Did I get that right? You did. you did. Nice. How many did he have the year before, like 88? 92. Yeah, I'm going to take over. Yeah, I'll say over as well. I mean, that's a mo- that is a monstrous year. Like yeah, He's still the focal point of the offense. I, I really don't see anyone taking catches away from him. Yeah. He's, he's going to be the – I mean, Jimmy Graham got – you know, they made him the highest paid tight end. But the Saints really never paid a wide receiver like mega money. You know, Colston, they paid him a lot, but he never, you know, Colston was never like a top five paid receiver, right? Like Thomas, he's going to get like mega money. Like he's going to want 17, 18, 19 million right after this year, you would think, right, Andrew? I mean, they're going to they're gonna pay him too. Yeah. Like, I, he might be a guy they pay. It'll be interesting because, the, the, you know, Odell Beckham and other guys, like, they'll if, – if Odell Beckham probably signs, so the market will be kind of set. I wouldn't be surprised, like, if Michael Thomas signed, not not obviously this year, but, like, going into his uh, – going into his fourth year next year, like, he'll sign. Like, he won't get to free agency, uh, and they won't have to tag him because it'll be it'll, – they'll, they'll get it done because – because going into next year, they'll have, don't they have like sixty million dollars in cap space? Yeah. So I mean, we we've talked about this before, but you know, I mean, I think Breeze in a lot of ways made Devery Henderson, Meacham, Colston, Sneed, yeah. Stills. I mean, all those guys like Lance Moore. Like I think if those guys are not those guys without Breeze, um, I take exception to that comment with Michael Thomas, and I think. He, his expiration date obviously is long after Breeze's, and I think whoever becomes Breeze's heir, they're going to want to make that quarterback's acclimation and 
transition easier by having Michael Thomas to throw to. So I, I just think whoever comes in and is the next quarterback for the Saints, they're going to want to have Michael Thomas in there to make that quarterback's life easier. And so I, I think this will be kind of a reverse case where, like, whoever comes in next, Michael Thomas will make that quarterback better, not the other way around that we've seen for so long. One thing about Michael Thomas, people can argue about whether he's elite, top five, whatever. I've seen the pictures he poses on Instagram, whatever. His body is elite. And that dude is ripped like a super fucking villain. It's like he's on the – he should be an X-Man or something. Um, so, Dave, like, w- what do you think is – but besides Michael Thomas getting hurt, because all that hand yoga. <laughs> besides that, that would be the worst case scenario. But what's the scenario for the Saints receivers besides Michael Thomas not playing for a large stretch? What's a what's a scenario that would worry you with the Saints at receiver or tight end that wouldn't involve injuries? Uh, that wouldn't involve injuries. Yeah, like like um, like what what guy do you feel like besides Thomas? It really needs to perform. Like, if what, what guy do you see if they struggle? You're like, oh boy, this is not good. Uh, probably Cameron Meredith. I mean, because you know, like we just discussed, after Michael Thomas, you know, the drop off between to to a healthy, good quality Cameron Meredith wouldn't be that drastic. It certainly would be existent, but it wouldn't be that drastic. But the drop-off between Michael Thomas and, I guess, Ted Ginn is your next guy. Um, I think there's more of a drop-off there. Um, you know, Cameron Meredith is a nice little, you know, gap-wide receiver there. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know, Brandon Coleman, he... he <laughs> I think a lot of us are probably disappointed with his performance last season after training camp and all the hype. Um, and obviously the Saints didn't really show him any love in free agency. Um, so, I mean, obviously it would be really great if Brandon Coleman could finally take that next step that we've all been waiting for. But in reality, and, you know, again, it would be bad news if he just c- continues to I don't know. I guess just not be, be trusted by Peyton and Breeze. Andrew, who, do you, who, what, what scenario would would worry you at receiver? Um, I mean, my expectations at tight end are already low. So if Ben Watson hits like the John Stinchcomb wall, you know, where he's basically just done. He plays one or two games, and he's you're just like, okay, he doesn't have it anymore. He's he's falling apart. Um, then tight end is even bigger of a problem that I feared, um, because then you know, you know, you're basically relying on Josh Hill, and you know maybe this UDFA turns into something. But I mean, he could easily be garbage. You know, he could easily prove that he shouldn't have been drafted in the first place. Um, and if that's the case, then to me, tight end's kind of like – it was bad last year. Tight end was the I worst could, it's ever I been for the Saints worse. last year. It, it snuck under the radar. But, like, tight end it was the worst it's ever been under the Saints. And, it like, it was the worst yeah. it's ever been by a lot. Like, it was a – it was a – it was it was a disaster. And we'd have, no, we'd have noticed it more except Kumar and Ingram and every – and they were awesome and everything was fun. So we didn't really pick too much on, like, negative things. So no one really gave a shit that tight end was a dumpster fire. But it was kind of a dumpster fire last yep. year, you know? It was. Um, Except for playoff Josh Hill. Playoff Josh Hill is so good. I, I I, want playoff Josh Hill to uh, be regular season Josh Hill. And then, Andrew, we can do uh, – we can go back to this podcast, and I can be right, and your prediction about the UDFA being the number of leading receiver, we can make fun of it. We can have our intern uh, cut the tape, and it'll be phenomenal. Um, so that wraps it up because we got the we got the Jamerson interview uh, to go. But um, final question for you guy for you guys, and then we'll and then we'll get to the uh, Jamerson interview. Uh, Dave, I'll 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 ask you uh, first. What is the 
one thing that you have to get done with your family before you say goodbye to them and football season starts? I have to sell my house, buy my new house, and move. Uh, all, all in about uh, 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 two months, right before, right, pretty much right when preseason starts. Andrew, what do you have to do? What's the one thing you got to get done before football season kicks in and you ignore your family? Um, I mean. I need to finish building my house, but that's not going to be done before football season starts, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a hectic few. It's going to be a hectic September, really, a stressful one. Managing, you know, kind of 11th hour pedal to the metal with fin- finishing that stuff. Yeah. And I put it to you this way, I'm really glad I'm not blogging anymore. <laughs> I have to... Uh, get like doing player grades in September would oh be. Oh my god! I, I it would kill me. It would kill me. <laughs> I have to get. And I say that because my wife would stab me. My wife. Life. Well, my one thing that I want to get done before football season starts is I want to convince my wife to give up her horrible <laughs> computer that overheats and practically burns her knees when she works on it. I want to convince her to get a new computer and transfer all her data onto it and her life will be so much better but she, what is it with with the malbro household computers i don't know well her computer's old I mean, it's, it's old it's missing keys it's like I, i've been like trying to get her a new computer and she just uh, i wonder if there's something about your house you know how like they say it's like <laughs> environmental issues where like some people if they live in a neighborhood like they get cancer because yeah. it's like Known carcinogens in the it's air. It's like asbestos. Does it ruin your lungs and your computers? No, I, I just wonder if there's like some environmental hazard that just ruins <laughs> computers in your house. I mean, her computer, it's it's not a bad computer. It's just old as fuck, you know? I mean, like, like a computer, basically, you can get like what? Like three years out of a computer? Four years, right, Dave? And then you got to like move it along. Unless it's uh, Apple. Yeah. Apple computers last longer. Bullshit. Well, my wife's, my wife's Apple. My wife. Yeah, she, her MacBook. My wife. Afterwards. Two years. <laughs> Look, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't, uh, we didn't do questions this week. I forgot to ask, but we got to. People had a shit ton of wide receiver and tight end questions last week, so I hope we got to them all. But anyway, so this ends this part of the podcast, uh, and now uh, the uh, Natrell Jamerson interview. So uh, enjoy that. We are. Pleased to be joined by Saints rookie defensive back and uh, 2018 fifth round draft pick Natrell Jamerson. Uh, Natrell, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me on. Um, Natrell, I I gotta say we were doing me and Andrew were doing research about you, and you have a really interesting pathway to the NFL and to college. You were from Ocala, Florida, uh, and you played high school. Football, you were a great receiver, had over 40 touchdowns. You ended up in Wisconsin. Uh, how did that happen, and how did you explain to your family, hey, I'm going up to the cold in Wisconsin to play football? Um, actually, I started getting recruited while Wisconsin because uh, one of the coaches uh, up at Wisconsin, they were looking at my teammate in college field, and uh, when they, they saw me on his. It was like, who's this guy? So that's kind of that's kind of how they started talking to me. And you know, once I took my business up there, and you know, got around the team, and you know, got on the campus, you know, I loved it. So you know, I decided that's where I'm gonna go. And they... tell, tell my family that, huh? No, I was gonna keep going. Oh, uh, tell, tell my family that um, I was going way up there. It wasn't too hard because for one, I wanted to get away. Um, I wanted to get out of the field world. And at the same time, my mom, she wanted the same thing for me, so it was, it was kind of easy. Was the, te- was the temperature difference, though? Did they, did they recruit you? Did, did you go visit in the summer, or did you did you, did you you sign right after you made your visit and they beat Indiana? Was it was it, was it, a, was it a culture shock, temperature shock, when you went in and visited in November? It definitely was. Um, I went around, like, the weekend before Christmas, not Christmas, but um, the weekend before Thanksgiving. So it was it was a little cold, but it wasn't too cold. But um, you know, they told me it gets cold out there, but nobody, I, you can't prepare for that type of cold, really. So, 
Yeah. <laughs> no, the now, same how do you know? How do you know PJ Williams? I know. I I read somewhere that did you guys play high school ball together? Yeah, we went to the same high school. Okay. And uh, people in Louisiana think high school football is king in Louisiana, and that's sort of thing. People that aren't familiar with Florida and Miami, I have some relatives in there. High school football in Florida, and specifically Miami, Detroit. It, it's kind of bonkers and insane, right? It, it's 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 not it's not a it's not just a little thing. It's a huge it's a huge event, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, playing, playing football, playing football here in Florida makes kind of easy around. That's just a skill position. But um, now, as soon as your your team is done playing like the the season, a lot of guys they do seven on seven, and seven on seven is from from January up, still going on now. But about the time seven on seven is over, where you back in, um, right back passing with your team. So it's year around four. That's great, man. Well, you know, I think uh, one thing that we're really interested about as Saints fans, you know, obviously, any any time there's only so much research you can do prior to the draft, and then obviously. As some of these names come up as Saints fans, you're, you're researching, you know, what's this guy all about? And, you know, obviously it's great to talk to you. I was excited to talk to you because a lot of times it's one thing to look at your stats and, and look at your comps and look at your combine numbers. But, uh, you know, attaching a personality to it um, always makes it more fun. But, um, you know, speaking of your combine stuff, um, you know, I, I was kind of reading up on you and, you know, it seemed like, you know, obviously you're, you're, at 5'11 and, and change, maybe a little bit smaller of an NFL player, and, and uh, you kind of come out of high school and, you know, you had really one school that made you a significant offer from a, a top-flight program like Wisconsin. So you go there and you switch positions. You're, you start at receiver, kick returner, and then you switch to corner, and then your senior season you're playing safety. So you switch positions a lot and then you kind of come into the combine and the write up on you is that you're undersized and you've only had one year playing safety. And so, you know, right away, the thing that jumps out at me is that, okay, this guy has probably been told his whole life that he can't do it. And I'm sure that that's kind of contributed to you having a chip on your shoulder, but then you look at your combine numbers and it's you clear. I mean, why? You, yeah. You, it's clear why you guys drafted. I mean, four, four speed, you're ridiculously strong. I mean, your your mm-hmm. comp numbers for weightlifting are way above anyone else your size. Um, so, do you think that that's kind of the reason why you did so well? The combine is kind of that chip on your shoulder, and maybe when you were younger, people telling you you couldn't do this stuff. Yeah, I mean, you know, kind of my whole life. Um, you know, of course, I'm not the biggest, but you know, once people once people see what I can do, you know, they're like, oh wow, like we didn't know these guys can do this or whatever the case may be. So, you know, I always, I always kind of back my mind that, you know, I, you know I'm not the tallest, um, biggest guy, but, you know, I'm, I can lift with anybody. I can run with anybody. I run most of them. So, um, yeah, I mean, I know my athletic ability backs me up regardless. So, you know, that when always has a kind of chip on my shoulder and that confidence with me. When you went to the well, combine, when you went to the combine, were you like, I am going to kill this combine? These people, they have no idea what I'm about to do. And but did you have that confidence going into the combine? Yeah, I definitely did because you know the combine, you know, even the whole week before it starts, you know, people are there hopping on the guys that you know that they expect to do so good and just blow out the combine, just ridiculous, ridiculous numbers. You know, um, that those few days we were there, you know, um, of course I was out. I wasn't getting all the all the tests at those times, but I don't really care about the tests like that. But um, you know, once we got on the field and way well, before we got on the field, we did the bench bench press. So you know, guys talking about they're gonna, what they're gonna do, what they, you know, I'm I'm just sitting there like, okay, yeah, we're gonna see what actually happens. But um, you know, we got there to kill the bench press. And yeah, people are like, oh, like, okay. <laughs> then, <laughs> then once you got doing the field stuff, they're like, okay, yeah, like this, he, this guy, he knows what he's doing. Cause me, I'm not, I'm not the you know, the loud person that's gonna tell everybody what I'm gonna do, how I'm gonna do it. 
I'm just show you what I'm gonna do. Then you just, you know, however you feel afterwards, that's on you. Well, so you know, we've been doing this podcast for about a decade in the trail, and uh, Sean Payton's been the coach of the Saints the whole time, and you hear him talk about the draft process. And over the years, we've he- heard him say this a million times, just that you, know, you want to be really clear about your vision for a player. And when you select a player, you want to be really thinking about, okay, what role does he fit on the team? And when, when I, and I'm curious what your take is on it. I mean, I think I see this pretty clearly to me. It's pretty obvious when, first of all, you know, I've read some, a couple guys that have come out and said that, you know, Charles Jamerson is the best special teams player in this whole draft. I've heard a couple of scouts and, and people make that statement. Um, so, you know, obviously from a special teams aspect, you can kind of learn on the job and keep a roster spot, play on special teams while you kind of learn. So, you know, hopefully that's a path for you. Um, but when – with any receiver with your speed and so to me I look at your your combine and I look at your write-up and to me you have nickel or slot corner written all over you and that that feels at least to me as a non non football guy is is a clear vision for you Um, have you talked to the Saints at all about what your role would be with the team or where they see you or do you feel like that's where you might fit in um so right now no two we look at mini camp OTAs and uh the mandatory mini camp that just ended. I've been uh I've been playing the outside corner. Um I know that I know the nickel ah, interesting. Stuff. Um, yeah, you know, so I know the nickel stuff and you know, I, I, when we got meetings, you know, I pay attention to the corner of course and then I you know try to dial what nickel does as well. So, you know, when the time comes, I don't know, if he throws me in that nickel I know what I'm doing. So he like when I when I talk when I talk to A G about it. Um, he just he said he wants me to get the corner stuff down for right now because he he knows I can play the nickel bit, but you know playing that whole my whole senior year at safety, he wants me to focus on getting the corner technique back down pat before I start you know focusing on playing nickel. Neutral, as as Andrew mentioned, you know Todd McShay and uh, I I can't remember the other draft analysts. They said you're the best special teams player in this draft. Besides just loving it and wanting to and, and giving a hundred percent and being willing to play special teams, what in your mind makes you great at special teams? Why did you why have you thrived so much at it? Um no, honestly I I don't know, I never really thought about that because you know, ever since uh in college, especially in college, I've been playing special teams and you know, you see a lot of guys they don't like playing special teams. They, you know, they get called the special teams. They, oh, I don't want to do it, or this and that. But every time I'm out there, you know, I, I take it just as serious as playing defense. Um, because I, I guess I've, I've always had that mindset of, you know, I, I don't have to be the star on the team. As long as I'm on the team in the game, contributing in any way, you know, that's 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 what I want to do. So carrying that mindset over to to now. Uh, you know, special teams in itself is just important to offense and defense. So special teams to, to uh, win and lose games. So you know, I'm gonna go out there and special teams do do better than what I did in college because uh, you know, man, special teams that's the that's the way to stay on the team really. So you know, as long as I'm out there, like you know, I said, contributing and playing, uh, it can be offense, not offense, uh, defense or special teams. Whichever one you know, I contribute the most, you know, I'm gonna give them all. Mitchell, do you have any insight to give us about the Saints? So I don't know how much or if any tape that you watched from the Saints last year, but you know one kind of common theme in their defense a lot of times is that they'll keep three safeties on the field um, during uh, nickel and dime packages. Um, you know, just to to keep kind of better tacklers on the team or, you know, more versatile players. And so what you saw a lot of times was that Kenny Vaccaro, Von Bell, and Marcus Williams uh, would all be on the field at the same times, or sometimes it would be Raphael Bush or what have you. Um, is, is there something unique about the Saints defense in terms of this three safety look they have? Um, or, 
or is it really just one of the safeties is, is just being asked to play nickel? Um, yeah, I, 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 of course, I don't know what uh, you know, what they did last year, but that was on the team. I just, you know, whatever I saw, that's just what I saw. But I'm pretty sure it was just, you know, um, a safety play in nickel. I don't think it was just they wanted three safeties on the field at the time. It was probably more of that safety. She just playing nickel. So it looks like there's three safeties on the field. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's my guess on what happened. So it's probably it's just an effort to get the best players on the field for the best roles. Makes sense. Yeah, always. Yeah. All right, Andrew, it's time to get to the important stuff. We we talked about the football. <laughs> now it's time to get to the important stuff. Ask him the import. Start with the important questions. This is this, this is the <laughs> key right, stuff. Right, Trump. All right, Nitrell, are you you're a music fan? You like music? Yeah, I like music. You uh, what are you into? Like rap music? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to show my age here, um, and I'm going to show how lame I am. But, uh, you know, as, as a 37-year-old dad, um, I had never heard – you know Post Malone, of course, right? You've heard him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, Ra- Ralph, have you ever heard of Post Malone? I know Carl Malone. I have a two-and-a-half-year-old child. I know, I know, I know. You've, Wheels never, the bu- you've never heard of Post Malone. I've right? never I – know, I, know, I know Door the Explorer and Wheels on the Bus go round and round. That's what I know okay. from YouTube. Okay, so I, I had never heard of Post Malone either, but, but apparently, so you know, and I, I'm trying to learn more about this because you know the people I hang out with are parents in their mid 30s, upper 30s, early 40s, and um, no one I talk to listens to Post Malone. But apparently, this guy has broken a 50 year old record by the Beatles for mm. most songs in the top 20 currently so um, he has nine he has nine of the top 20 songs so like i'm trying to find out who even listens to this guy or likes him like is that are, are you natrell are you the demographic like do you like post malone or is that like super lame for you <laughs> no i like post malone um maybe uh, i would say smooth but his music isn't you know like off the top like loud his music kind of laid back and you know, he just didn't vibe to it so I, I just i just recently downloaded his uh his past album so it's, it's pretty smooth I, I listen to it who, who would you say are like you're kind of what would you prefer to listen to <laughs> um so one is a he's a florida rapper out of miami named iceberg um been a fan of his where few years um another one uh jeezy you know jeezy yeah of course Um, yeah yeah uh boosie of course uh louisiana um who was i listening to uh Who's your pregame? Who? What's your pregame exactly. music? What's your pregame music? You, it's it's week one. The Saints are playing Tampa. You're stretching. You're getting ready before kickoff. The crowd's starting to fill in. Who who are you listening to on the headphones? Mm, I don't know. I I, I, got, I said I'd find it, but it'll probably be either something from Lil Boosie or um, his rapper named Key Glock out of out of um. Memphis. So I don't know. I said I, I just I said that I find out one song. So Ralph know. Ralph has never heard of Post Malone. Have Natrell, have you heard of the Beatles? You know who the Beatles are? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I heard of the Beatles. They, he's, he's one step ahead of us, man. He is. I, <laughs> Multi-generational. I, I, I feel old I feel old every day at work because the twenty somethings in the marketing department they don't know things. I'm like, how can you not know that? So, Natrell, this has got me super excited. Me and Andrew doing research. Uh, he said your favorite go-to restaurant is Potbelly. Is this correct? Yeah. Uh, all right. I am a, I am a Potbelly connoisseur. I go there three times a week. What is your go-to sandwich? Mine is off the menu. I go buffalo chicken, extra hot sauce, extra peppers. What do you, what do you do on the Potbelly menu? What's the go-to? Oh, I got two of them. One is the uh, the pizza sandwich, and the other one is uh, the grilled chicken and cheddar. Oh, that's good. See, Potbelly's Potbelly's yeah. phenomenal. <laughs> we bought, see, I, 
Yeah. They, they they know my they know me by name, and I know the word. Denise knows what I want. I just go in there, and she she just makes it. I don't even have to say it. Uh, so Andrew, what do you have to? What, what do you? <laughs> well, what about New Orleans? Have you had any? Uh, have you gone to any restaurants in New Orleans yet, or do you have a favorite so far? Um, honestly, I I haven't been to like any like traditional New Orleans restaurants. Um, I've been because I, I I never had canes before until I got out there. Oh, wow. Good. So, What'd you think? It's all right. It's not. I think some people may have, may have hyped it up, but it, it's not all that. <laughs> I, mean, it's, it's, I, I, I definitely, I definitely eat it. But it's like in and out, man. You know, it, the, the hype is the hype is incredible. I don't, yeah. I don't know. In and out kind of good now. In and out kind of good. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> in and out. In and out. Call me that. <laughs> Well, what about you? Are you a Madden player? No, I don't play Madden. I, you played, okay. I, I got a, I got a PlayStation. I, I barely play it, so okay. I'm really well, the 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 reason I ask is Alvin Kamara tweeted EA Sports today, and it was either today or yesterday, and he was unhappy with his accessories, and you know he he had, he wears the tape down his forearm and above his elbow, um, and the Madden. I guess the game just didn't have the, the tape accessory um, on his Madden, um, you know, guy or whatever. So I'm mm. curious, are you going to tweet EA Sports in a couple of years? Is there like a, is there a specific look or a signature style to your game day that kind of distinguishes you from other players? Uh, I haven't really found it yet because, you know, in the NFL, you know, you got a you got um you know uh uniform policies and stuff. Right. But, uh, in practice, you don't, in practice you don't. So we, in practice, I didn't know how to do a car. I haven't. I don't know why I haven't wear, haven't been wearing a hoodie in practice. Probably because it's hot. But um, <laughs> instead of like long socks, I usually put two sleeves on my leg and just rock, rock no cut socks. So. That's why he's doing college. I can't do that in the games and the no more. It's fine. But um, I don't know yet. I still got to still gotta play around and see what I like. All right. So, Natral, I don't know how familiar you are with Saints history, but the Saints have a very illustrious history, I think, of, like, touchdown celebrations. They had Joe Horn back in the day with the cell phone. When he scored, he pulled it out. They had uh, – Andrew, they had Lance Moore. He did – Maybe the most the famous. The Hingle Yeah. So, like, Sean yeah. Payton, if you're good and you perform and feel, like, Sean Payton will let you express your personality and let you have fun. You got, you got, you got Sean, uh, you got uh, Jimmy Graham with the goal post dunk. Goal post dunk, right. So, yeah. Natrell, do you have your touchdown celebration when you run back a kickoff for the Saints? Do you have, or if you, however you score touchdown, do you? Hits. Yeah. Do, yeah. Do you have it ready so you can go viral, so it can be on Sports Center, so it can be on Twitter, so it can be on Instagram, and it can take over the whole world? Is your touchdown celebration is it ready? Um, I think I think it is ready. Yes. It yeah. <laughs> You're not gonna tell us anything. You're gonna surprise us. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it be a surprise. <laughs> it's, it's not. It's not like all. It's not too off the top for the crazy nothing like that. But uh. But you're prepared. But you're prepared. Yeah, I'm prepared. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, one thing that's huge, and we're going to teach you a little something about now that you're a member of the Saints, um, you know, it's really important that you – there. there's one there, – there's, there's just rule number one. There's one rule as a player for the Saints or a fan, and that's you got to hate the Falcons. There's just – it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's a rule that, you know, once you're in black and gold, fleur de lis, we hate the Falcons, so you know we got to give you a quick boot camp on Falcons hatred. Um, so I'm just going to ask you, which player right now are you most looking forward to hitting in the league? On Falcons? No, no, just oh, in the league. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Hello. Hello. All night, so. Not bad. I mean, we were we were we were, we were looking for Julio Jones, <laughs> um, but, but we'll accept that answer. 
All right, next question. Which quarterback are you most – do you most want to intercept? Um, ooh, Matt Ryan, of course. Yes. Uh, He's getting it. <laughs> yeah. You're good. Yeah. All right. La- last question. Which stadium – do you most want to win in besides the Superdome? Uh, the Falcons Stadium. Yeah. yeah, he's got it, man. <laughs> yes, what? Yes, you need to. You need to maybe maybe have like Matt Ryan getting sacked. Like put that as a screensaver on your phone to like get you really fired up. But you are on your way. I see. That's a way to just say just you know just really say bad things about Atlanta. It's a way to uh, Saints fans' hearts. Yeah. You. <laughs> uh, more seriously, are there any players, Natrell, in the league, um, either friends of yours or just guys that you're really looking forward to playing against? Any like maybe childhood heroes, anything like that? Um, I would say right now Antonio Brown, because he's, he's you know one of the well, he probably is the best receiver in the league. Um, so they say, you know, um, you know, just everybody really, cause like I'm, like I'm new to, I'm new to this, this whole life, this NFL life. So for the longest, not just been watching guys on TV and just kind of putting myself in, in their place or against them, you know, saying what I would do in so and so situation. And now I have the opportunity to actually be in that situation. So honestly, I'm taking every, Every opponent, every opportunity I got, and just learning from it, enjoying it. Um, cause like I say, it's all new to me, and you know, I can't. Well, I can, but I'm not gonna sit and you know idolize another player when I my, my goal is to beat them on the field. So, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to playing everybody. Well, the Steelers, December 23rd <laughs> on the Saints schedule, so. An- Antonio yeah. Brown this year, it, it, it's it's yeah. on the schedule. It's possible. It could happen. Yeah, that's right. So, Natrell, thanks for joining us. I want you to remember us when you are all pro, all world, and on the cover of Madden. Remember the little people when you were <laughs> just a draft pick, and just remember us. We don't, we don't need it. We just, we don't need a shout out. But just keep us in your your mind. So, guy, thanks for joining us. We appreciate the time. It, it's been a lot of fun, and uh, and good luck this year. We're we'll, uh, we're rooting for you. Yeah, thanks for having me on, man. I enjoyed it.